Yesterday, Professor Yang mentioned the result of Simon Donaldson on four manifolds, and um, he was, of course, a student at the Mass Institute, where I am. So for actually many, many years, um, Professor's, Professor Yang's name was always present on our notice board on a daily basis. So for instance, if it's not yang Mill's theory, um, then it is Yang-Baxter equation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right, okay. Um, so that's... Okay, so this, is, this talk is given uh, at this conference, and I thank the organizers for, uh, for the invitation. Okay, so the st frame standard model um, a part of the geometry of gauge theory, I mean, I'm just repeating the, just one or two points from the previous talk. Um, so we introduced the framons and to, to, to play the role of the Higgs bosons. Uh, there's a double symmetry, SU to three cross SU two cross U one. And then the tilde group, uh, as abstract groups, they're same, but they, of course they have different meanings. The first three are local symmetries and the Last three are global symmetries. So in result, it results in a three-level mass matrix of rank one uh, that's been shown as well. Uh, so no mixing at the, at the three level. And mass matrix is scale dependent, leading non-zero lower generation masses and non-zero mixing. So this talk is to confront these last two points with data. Um, so the rotating mass matrix our aim is to quantify the rotation of alpha, and the, it's a unit vector, so the rotation takes place on a unit sphere, and for this we compute the one loop relevant uh, Feynman diagrams. I'm just showing you that there are actual formulas for the, for the, mass, uh, for the masses, lower generation masses, and the mixing. So, but I won't, uh, I won't actually go through them. So, um, Right. Oh, yes. Uh, just to mention that uh, you can see that there is there uh, on the um, on these uh, um, uh, vectors there are the face that appears there. So therefore, uh, the, the CKM matrix is in general complex, and therefore there is actually the KM mixing uh, CP dividing angle. Okay. So the I'm um, I'm showing you the potential uh, which was. Um, written down using the double symmetry of G and G tilde. It's just, it's really not for you to, not, not to show you what they are, but to, to, to show you that there are actually the coupling constants which are mentioned later. Um, the diagrams are simple, so they can be calculated very easily. And uh, so, so now we derive this renormalization group equa uh, equation for this vector alpha. So alpha, we just write it in spherical coordinates in terms of a theta and phi, and we introduce a parameter r, which is in terms of these um, coupling constants. So th th these are the renormalization equations uh, dotted with respect to uh, log t, or log t squared, perhaps. Um, and so you've got R dot, R, you remember, is the combination of these um, coupling constants, and theta is the angle uh, theta of alpha, the uh, spherical polar. And the third one is the, is the equation con t uh, c um, connecting theta and alpha. And it, it, I mean, the, the equation was, could easily be integrated, and there is an e integration constant R, um, A, which governs the geodesic curvature. Um, okay, so nothing to, to I mean, that, that's it, I mean, so we're just using that. So the, uh, the trajectory of alpha, as was um, said in the previous talk, depends, uh, there is a shape function, which d just depends on alpha, and there is a speed function, but the speed function is much less precisely predicted, um, because of, first of all, we're just calculating one loop, and secondly, it depends on three parameters, um, so rho s, a coupling, and then two integration constants. And it depends on some uh, integration constants of our initial values, r i, say for instance, and theta i. Um, depends on some unknown and perhaps uncalculable effects 
which we represent as a function of k of mu, and we actually replace k of mu by a constant, with some justification. OK, so this is, again, the shape. I'm sorry, this is a bit dist dis uh, distorted. It is a sphere. So that was the same thing. Um, so the, so what, what kind of um, task we have to face? Well, we, we take the fermion mass, mass and mixing data. And uh, first of all, there's a large amount of bed data. There are 12 fermions. And the, the two mixing, CKM and the neutrino oscillation angles. It, they are vastly different in percentage errors in the data. So it, of course, we know the electron mass to, I don't know how many, 11 places of decibel. And um, on the other hand, there is the atmospheric angle, which is not very well known. Um, it's even just got a bound. And the masses are ranging over 13 orders of magnitude from the neutrinos to the uh, top mass. OK, so I'm just showing you the data again. So this is data when we first wrote our paper last year. So you can see that um, uh, it starts from 173 GeV and uh, down to, um, down to the, the, the lower generation masses and the, and the electron, uh, lepton masses. And then you can see the e electron is really very, very well measured indeed. I mean, of course, we're not try trying to reproduce that to that accuracy. And then the physical masses of the neutrinos, uh, the difference, mass differences uh, uh, are shown, and they are not actually, of course, the accuracy is very different. And the quark mixing, the quark mixing, um, the, some of the, some of the, um, some of the angles are very well measured, uh, say, uh, but, but some of them are less so. And then um, there's Young's the invariant, which is, uh, which, is the, uh, which is one way of parameterizing the CP violation in, uh, in the CK matrix. And the neutrino angles, as I said, theta squared to theta 2, 3, the atmospheric one, is actually just a bound. And um, so, the, the last two is sometimes known as solar angle, and the sec, uh, third one is atmospheric angle. The first one, well, maybe we can call it the Daya Bay angle. Right. OK, so before we do that, let's um, try to do a parameter count. Um, the theory has seven adjustable parameters. Uh, so the first six are in the uh, potential. Oh, no, sorry, the first one, two, three, four, five. Five in the uh, potential. And then the, we have, for the neutrino sector, we introduce the Dirac mass of the heaviest neutrino, and also the theta CP from QCD. And we choose six inputs. It just happens the six inputs actually fix, fix the seven parameters. So we choose them um, carefully. Uh, first of all, we want uh, numbers which are well measured, and also we want the, the, the numbers to, to um, sort of spaced quite well, unif not, not of course not exactly uniformly, but um, uh, sort of uh, per uh, populating the whole range we want to do. So what we chose was the mass of the C, mass of the mu, mass of the E, so the um, VUS, the UB, um, and then these, um, the, the um, theta one three, or Daya Bay. Uh, so, so this is uh, chosen, and it happens that the VUS, the Kabibo angle, actually determined two of the parameters. Say, say for instance, the A from the integration, but from the shape, um, from the shape uh, function. OK, so what, what can we calculate? We can actually calculate 23 parameters. So eight of the lower generation masses, all the five, nine CKM elements, so that's the absolute values, and plus the uh, CP violating phase, or the delta, or in this case, we just chose the Yaskov invariant, and the three neutrino oscillation angles, and the um, 
and the mass of the heaviest, uh, um, no, actually it's the Dirac mass of the uh, heaviest neutrino, and then the theta CP from strong interaction. Of these 17, are supposed to be independent independent uh, parameters in the usual usual formulation of standard model. So the eight uh, again is the late eight lower generation masses, the four CKM parameters, the three neutrino uh, oscillation angles, and the um, third new direct mass of the third neutrino heaviest neutrino and theta CP. And of which of these seventeen. 12 can be compared to experiment. Um, so, the, so we have M, M, C, M, S, M, U, M, E, the ratio of M, U, and M, D. You remember the, M, the mass of the U quark and the mass of D quark were ma measured at 2 GeV. Of, uh, in, in fact, the, the numbers given are the masses measured at 2 GeV and not at the mass of the uh, particles themselves. And the three neutrino oscillation angles. So, however, however, if you remember the um, some some of the parameters in the CK matrix, so the CK matrix has only four independent parameters, um, but but because um, some of them are measured very accurately, some of them less, so we actually need to check more. Uh, so not, uh, we had had to ch check eighteen of them to make sure that the uh, the accuracy the accuracy we, we can we can get. Uh, you know, match the matches those in the experiment. Okay, so what's the fit? So uh, I remind you that all the fermions lie on the same trajectory, so it is a kind of universality. So we just need to have one trajectory, and to fix the position of each type. Type means each um, whether it's u, d, u quark, d quark, or charged leptons or neutrinos. Uh, we, we input the heaviest generation masses, the so top, the B, the B, and the tau. So, um, and then the neutrino masses are supposed to be generated by some kind of uh, seesaw mechanism. We took the simplest, and so we input the assumed values of the Dirac mass of the heaviest neutrino to fit data, to fit the physical, uh, the, the mass, uh, square mass differences of the physical. Uh, things. Okay, so the following the proce procedure that I've just uh, roughly mentioned um, or the, in the previous talk as well, we have to first input six parameters uh, to fix the seven, uh, one, seven in our theory. So to, to give, but, but of course they are not the same parameters, so we must make sure if we input the, these parameters, we actually get them back to a reasonable ac accuracy. And what we got was that um, uh, for the C, it's less, uh, it's within error. Um, for for the Kabibo angle, it's within error. For the U, uh, VUB, it's within error. Uh, sine square 2 theta 1, 3 is within error. And for the muon mass and the electron mass, we could do to within half a percent. As I said, the electron mass, of course, we never ever really try to get to the accurate within error. Okay, so what's the output now? Um, so let me just go through this in a, uh, in jet, in a sort of uh, slowly. So the output, first of all, is the mass of the strange quark. Now the strange quark uh, is not very well um, reproduced, uh, mainly because it's, uh, there is QCD running, and uh, so the, 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 the mass given is at 2 GeV, and what we are, we uh, measure, we calculate is at the mass of the um, of the the ma of the at zero point one seven nine GeV itself. Uh, the ratio of the MU and MD, as I explained, um, the mass of the U and the D are also given in at two GeV. Uh, so, but um, but the ratio is independent of QCD running. So we actually could reproduce the ratio of the U and D to within error. Uh, so but I, first, but how do I do this? Uh, 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 uh. 
All right, I was trying to... Oh. All right, I can't get the light, uh, the pointer. All right, um, okay, all right. So let, let me know, that, that's... that's fine. Well, it didn't work, but it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. So, um, all right, so the M, um, so the, uh, so I say MU, uh, the ratio is within error, and then the, the V, U, D, uh, less than two sigma, and the, um, uh, VCD within error, and then uh, VCB, well, again, about two sigma, and so on. Uh, now, the, um, the VTD is a, perhaps the worst, but it's actually a very, very small number. If, as you can see, it's 0 0.00867, and we have 0 0.01223. Um, Yao's code invariant, also not, not dot on, but it's it's definitely a very uh, within, uh, I mean, w very much within ma order of magnitude. And the um, solar angle is um, within error. And uh, well, okay, so, so the atmospheric angle is only a bound. There's not much we can say about it, but it's still quite, um, it's, it's sort of about the same kind of number. So, in addition, in ad so those were the numbers we could compare with the experiment, but in addition, we also got five other standard model parameters, um, uh, such as the theta CP. Um, okay, so there's not much significance at the moment, of course, of this number. What I want to say is that it is of the order unity. So it is not, uh, it's something quite, if, since it's just a um, coupling constant, that's the sort of thing you expect and not 10 to the minus uh, 19 or something. Uh, okay, and then the MU, MU we, as I said, we, we were off or MD, but the ratio is, is okay. Um, the, the Dirac masses of the three neutrino, neutrinos, uh, that's not known, of course. Okay, so I'll show you the fit. Um, so they, I, sh I don't know if you can see, so you can see on the, on the down, on here. So it starts with T, the T quark, the B quark, the tau, the C, the C and, and so on. And then um, at the, the new three is the physical mass of the, the uh, heaviest neutrino. And then it crosses the, um, the pole, if you like, the inflection point and the lower generation masses are behind. So I'll show you now uh, the back view. So in the back view, you can see the, um, the neutrinos and the electron. Um, I can't see. Mm -hmm. I hope it, is this visible? I think I hope it's uh, because I spent a lot of time trying to make this work. Okay. Um, now the the fit also gives us, uh, as, in, uh, as mentioned in the last um, talk that MD is greater than MU. Now, it, this can actually be seen uh, quite, uh, quite easily on this picture. So, um, M, the, the, the U quark, since the U quark and the D quark are actually very light compared with the, um, the, other, uh, the top generation and the second uh, and the middle generation, um, so the uh, by leakage mechanism, so we can more or less think that the U should lie on the plane that's defined by T and C. Well, it's actually a little bit off, but it should be defined by that. And then the D should lie on the plane or a little bit off the plane defined by the B and S, the, vector, uh, the position of B and S. And because T and C are closer, so you can see it's the, it's the blue plane. I don't know if that's blue. Um, so that's where the U is, and, the, uh, and because the B and the S are further apart, then the, the plane is tilted, so that in fact the D, the trajectory hits the plane of the BS, BS plane, 
before it hits the U, uh, the, the U which is the uh, T, C plane. Uh, I, don't, I hope this is clear. The colors are not very, not very, uh, not very distinguishable. So one is the blue plane and one is the T plane. So in, in a sense, this is generic. This is generic because we have, um, because the, the, the geodesic curvature change a sign after the inflection point. So it's the back of the sphere and that's why the, cur the curves goes this way. So it's it, uh, sort of independent of the details of the fit. Okay, so let me summarize. Uh, as I said, we've got seven adjustable parameters and can calculate 23 quantities. 18 of them are measurable. So 10 within errors, two within 0.5%. You remember it was with the mu and the E. And two within 1.5%. Three with an order of magnitude or better, and then one uh, with uh, QCD running. I'm talking about the the, the mass of the S quark, and ca and cannot the, the QCD running cannot be calculated at present. And uh, and of these, 17 are independent in a standard model. So so our claim is that we actually replace the 17 parameters with seven parameters. And so uh, if you count them both. If for both measurable and independent, there are 12 parameters. So even that, we have gained five, if my arithmetic is right. And there's a bonus point, and the bonus point is that the mass of the D is in generic, generically larger than the mass of the U. Okay, conclusion. So in this short talk, I've got very good time. Um, I did not present the frame standard model in full, of course. Um, I only presented a small part of it, and this is the fitted data. Um, we did not ex explore all parameter space, I must say that. I, we did not explore all parameter space. We, our aim was just to get a fit. And in fact, we, we actually did not get the fit um, by any algorithm, uh, in a sense that uh, you know, chi-squared or some minimizing chi-squared or something, because of the very different uh, percentage errors of the data. So if you put, of course you can put weights, but any weight you put on, sorry, I don't mean bodily weight, <laughs> any weight on the data you put on um, would be very subjective. So instead of, of doing that, we just, um, we just try to get the best results as we can, and then uh, with enough uh, points with, with, within, within error. Uh, just to show, so we just say, you know, just to show it's a decent plot, a decent uh, fit, and to our prejudiced eyes, it's a very good fit. Um, this fixes for us a, param um, an, uh, a number of parameters in our theory, uh, so which we shall use in future to calculate other consequences which was mentioned in the previous talk of the uh, famed standard model. I think that's all. Thank you. Uh, strong CP uh, theta. Yeah. Uh, you predict that it's uh, of order one. Yeah. But however, experiments about the neutron, for example, uh, electric type moment yeah. normally tell us that uh, theta CP must be small. Yes, but that's, um, but we, if you remember, we've actually. We've actually um, transformed the theta into the CP violating uh, delta of the CK matrix. So in that sense, theta is zero for us in the strong sector. So there is actually no theta oh, CP. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, another question is, uh, your picture, you show only a sphere. Yes. But however, you mentioned that uh, actually your picture is for uh, group manifold of as u one u one times as u two times as u three, which actually is uh, eight uh, I mean, yeah, very yeah. high dimensions. Yes, of course. But uh, the alpha actually moves in the generation space, which is three dimensional. So, but we have actually normalized it 
to be a unit vector. So it's a sphere in three dimensional. Okay, so manifold. that's a sphere in generation space. That's right, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's about the frame on potential which you wrote down from yeah. the symmetries. Yeah. The coefficients, uh, are they put in by hand or is there no. a geometrical interpretation? For instance, the mass squared, uh, the negativity of the mass squared, is that put in the by hand? The mass squared? Yeah. The quadratic. Uh, oh, mu. Yes. I see. Okay. Um, mm, mm. Yeah, here. Yeah. Oh, uh, these are three parameters. So that's what we call adjustable parameters. So there are seven of those in the theory, that which we actually fix by data. So the six parameters I showed you. Suppose you didn't use a Fremont potential, could you generate a Fremont potential via the Coleman-Weinberg mechanism? And would it look something like this? Well, actually, we wrote down the most general um, potential up to fourth order, uh, which are invariant under the group of SU3, you know, the, the G, G cross G tilde. Right. So we could do that because our symmetry is enlarged. I so it's the most you, general one. I mean, could you generate a one-loop potential if you didn't, if you set this equal to zero, for instance? There's a Coleman-Weinberg mechanism. Mm -hmm. Could you use that to generate a potential? We, we haven't done that, but we thought this is, this is the, in fact, the most general one, um, which, uh, which um, are in, co in accordance with, uh, in, uh, with um, uh, uh, simple symmetry principles. Right. So, um, but the, the parameters obviously are arbitrary. Okay. At this Thank stage. You. Thank you.